Uh, Elizabeth Warren has officially suspended her presidential campaign. And uh, this means a couple different things. One, uh, cool. I, I, I think I think the progressive vote uh, in the in the Democratic Party is not going to be as split down the middle. Um, you know, because I, I do think that a lot of Elizabeth Warren supporters, from from what I've gathered uh, by, and and the way that I've gathered it is via like online uh, o- o- online support, what I've what I've seen online, um, and uh, talking to friends, a uh, couple news stories and stuff like that. But it really seemed like uh, a lot of Elizabeth Warren supporters were uh, Bernie supporters in 2016. Now, Bern- the reason why Bernie even ran is because Liz wasn't going to run because Hillary Clinton basically made everybody sign a thing that said, let me be the female candidate and, and kind of champion this movement, uh, and then I'll help you guys out, uh, you know, down, down the line kind of a thing. And uh, we, well, we, all, we all know how that shook up, and, and, I, and I really think that uh, it had Elizabeth Warren ran in 2016, it, it would have been a, a stronger, um, it, a stronger push for for uh, progressive things. Because I think, you know, I, I mean, I was I, I even thought she was very progressive. It, it wasn't until really de- uh, uh, deeper into this presidential run that she made where I was like, I, I think she's kind of she she's not as progressive as as uh, what what she wants us to believe she is, you know. Um, and I, I did a, 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 a video about uh, her becoming Biden's VP, which is, a, which is a, a possibility at this point. You know, all the people that have suspended their campaigns are not, they're not, uh, they're not Bernie people. And, you know, you even had someone on MSNBC basically go on and be like, hey, the DNC, the DNC is going to pick its candidate. That's what they do. Uh, so all of your primary vote, like they're basically just like your primary votes don't matter. Nobody gives a shit. You get to vote for the person we tell you you should vote for. That's how you get to participate in democracy. And that's like that's not a fucking democracy. And Elizabeth Warren kind of leaned on that side. So I, I figured I could kind of talk about that a little bit, right? Is is what's been going on with Elizabeth Warren? Um, for, because I do have a lot of friends that support her. I do have a lot of people that voted for her. Uh, and, you know, after 2016, I really got, uh, I got to a point where I was like, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get on anybody's case about, uh, who they voted for. I'm more interested on why they voted for that person and what they believe in and why they believe in what they believe in. Those, those are, those are the things that, uh, have always been important to me and will, will now continue to be even more important to me, uh, based on, you know, the, the, the state of things. I, I just don't think that we're uh, us fighting each other on uh, which, which political mascot, which, which mascot for ideologies uh, we, we wanted to vote for is, uh, is, is a productive means of, of achieving progress or, or any of that sort of stuff. So um, she, do, she doesn't run in 2016. Bernie runs in 2016. Uh, and, uh, and, and really... Uh, she, I, I don't, and maybe I'm wrong. And, and correct me if I'm wrong. Feel free to leave a comment about this if 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 if, if you feel like uh, if there is information and evidence uh, to show that I'm wrong. But I, I don't remember her really showing a lot of support towards Bernie during the run. She kind of kept a little bit of distance from him uh, in 2016 when he was running, and and even when he was cheated out of the election, I don't really think she said anything because I think at that point she had decided, well, yeah, I'm going to make my run. I'm going to make my bid. And uh, so, you know, she started the Consumer, uh, the, the consumer Protection Bureau, right, a, a, to, to hold banks accountable. And, she, and a lot of things that she was saying, a lot of the, the ways that she was going about things, um, they sounded very progressive. 100%. I mean, I thought, I, I, I agreed with a lot of people where, when I said, well, yeah, she's, she's another progressive candidate, right? Uh, she's 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 the third she's the third third pre- uh, or you know uh, maybe fourth presidential candidate that we had in 2020 that that I would have considered to be a progressive candidate. Bernie Tulsi, I think Yang had a lot of progressive initiatives, and uh, um, uh, Elizabeth Warren in the beginning I thought was progressive. And as this campaign kept going forward, we got to see uh, quite quite the opposite of that. I think. 
you know, you, you, you really got to see, well, she came out, uh, she mishandled a bunch of things, like the, the Native American thing. She just mishandled it. Um, you, you could have, you could have handled it completely differently, kind of getting bullied into taking that test and being like, see, I'm one, one sixteenth or, or how, like, it was just this very small percent of Native Americans. It's like, no, but that doesn't justify you putting that on your application because you thought that would, like, help you get a job or, or whatever. Like, that's not cool. And, and she did apologize for doing that. And then she did uh, work with uh, one of the, the Native um, uh, congresspersons uh, to try to help I- improve the lives of Native citizens in America, uh, so good on her, right, like, it seemed like she was, oh, okay, like, you seem like you're genuinely, uh, sorry about what, uh, what happened, and it seemed like you, you did fuck up, and that's, uh, that's cool, like, cool, thank you, thank you for, thank you for admitting to that, and thank you for, um, thank, you know, uh, put, essentially putting your, putting your money where your mouth is kind of thing, um, but I, I do think that, you know, uh, that's not going to help with the Trumpers. The Trumpers are going to ha- latch on. He's going to tra- latch onto that for sure. I think uh, he will definitely latch onto it and launch into Pocahontas, Pocahontas. Um, and I thought that was that was enough to probably, you know, b- kill her campaign a little bit. So uh, you had that, and then she started waffling on Medicare for all. She started waffling on a lot of different progressive initiatives that she had kind of been known for, right? Like the the public education. Uh, that should be like a, a standard thing. Like people should be given the opportunity to pursue an education without massive amounts of debt. Seems like a pretty reasonable plan. Uh, Medicare for all. She started waffling on. That kind of seemed a little strange to me as well. Um, you know, uh, it, it, then she was talking about taxing billionaires, but only after the first 50 billion. After you've made the, and it's like, well, first 50 billion, you know, do you understand how big a big 1 billion is? And you want to let these fuckers have 50 of them? Holy shit. That's when you want to tax them? Like, and then she, and then it was like a fraction of a percent that she wanted to tax them. She, and this is not stuff that I'm making up, this is stuff that she said on the fucking debate stage. And I was just like, what are you talking about, lady? So, but, and to me, these are not real, you know, progressive initiatives. These are pretty, pretty softball neoliberal initiatives. And she was kind of drifting in that direction. Um, And this is late as December is when she's coming out and saying this stuff, right? Um, She's meeting with Hillary Clinton. Why? Uh, why are you meeting with her? She lost the race. Progressives don't believe in her. People that consider people people that came to your campaign to support your campaign from the Bernie contingent, well, they didn't come to your thing because you you're you're fucking buddies with Hillary Clinton. Why are you going? It, that never made any sense to me, right? Uh, she so and then and then she started attacking Bernie a whole bunch. Uh, and saying shit about him during the debates. Like, she never really backed him up. Um, and then in January, we saw her. Well, it wasn't even her. She just kind of didn't say anything about it. Uh, she, there, there were two staffers that came out and, and, like, what was crazy, it was a CNN reporter that was specifically there to cover Elizabeth Warren uh, and, and Elizabeth Warren's campaign. <laughs> That came out and said, uh, that person came out and said that two of the staffers said, Bernie Sanders, uh, said that, man, okay, I'm saying a lot of shit, because I'm trying to remember exactly how to phrase it. Okay, CNN reporter that was specifically there to cover Elizabeth Warren talked to two staffers that said that in a closed door meeting in January 2019, Bernie Sanders said that a woman can't be president which seemed like an insane statement because it was an insane statement. There's absolutely no record of it. 
right? Like it was like Bernie and Elizabeth Warren meeting together to talk about 2020, and but you know, Ber- like Bernie essentially giving uh, Elizabeth Warren to be like, yeah, I I would love it if you were like that would be fucking amazing. Like I think it would take a lot of pressure off of off of just me being up there talking about some of these initiatives, right? Um, and and a a staffer got third hand information that they relayed to a journalist who reported to us fourth hand essentially and she tried to like now this CNN journalist is specifically there to cover Elizabeth Warren and she tried to like track down Elizabeth Warren and couldn't find it's like that's your job your whole job is to fucking be on the ball with Elizabeth Warren and where she's going and what she's doing and all this other stuff and you're just like I couldn't find her to corroborate whether the story is true or not but we're just gonna report it like it is and that's what they did right and then Elizabeth Warren like didn't really say anything about it I think she said like she made like one statement about it where they where she was she didn't deny it she didn't confirm it she just kind of made a vague statement uh, about her campaign and then uh, and then when when they she was like I'm just not gonna say like I'm not I'm not at liberty to talk about what happened in a closed door meeting and then so they they came at her again was just like hey the debates are coming up um, you know I think we're but this has become kind of this huge national story um, what do you think about that? Like, can you can you confirm or deny that that he said this? And then she got like pissed off and told the reporter that she's not going to answer questions like that, and she's tired of dealing with it. When it's like nobody fucking like nobody's been asking you. Two people fucking asked you. It seems like, like who is bug? Is like, did are you getting calls from your mom to be like Elizabeth? Did did that Bernard say those things about the ladies? Did did she do that? Like, no, I doubt it. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then, and then she went on that debate stage, and uh, you know, and the, 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 there was that viral moment where she was on a hot mic, and she went up, and she goes, "I believe you called me a liar on national television," and it's just like, "Yeah, well, bitch, stop lying," and nobody would have to do that. And then Bernie was also just like, "No, I didn't do that. Uh, you know what? We're not. Uh, if you want to sit down and talk about it, I'm happy to do it. We're not going to do this here." She was trying to goad him into a fucking fight on a hot mic to get a to you know to get CNN more fucking clicks essentially, and just that little thing got got a bunch of clicks, which is like what the fuck? Like you're supposed to be the progressive. Why are you going after the other progressive on stage? Why are you attacking this guy? What is what's the what's the fucking point of this? This doesn't make any fucking sense. At that point, I was just like, I don't, I don't, I can't support this lady. I don't think she has the best interest in our minds. Uh, I, I don't think she has the best, uh, our best interest at, at heart. I think, I think she is, she has gone down the DNC neoliberal, the track. Then Hillary Clinton started saying shit about Bernie, and that didn't fucking take him down, you know. And and she was, she wasn't doing great. You know, she's third or fourth place, and, and and this is a high hopeful. It, it, like, I thought the DNC was putting a lot of fucking chips in her basket because the first debate they spent a lot of fucking time on her. So, we get to Super Tuesday. Mayo Pete's out, Klobuchar's out. Just Bloomberg and Warren are 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 the other two top contenders. And uh, and and she can't hold up. Third or fourth, she got third in Massachusetts. That's her own state, and she wasn't able to like even even come in second place. Which I thought, you know, I I I, I did feel a little bad where I was like, man, that's that's that should have been all you. That should have been all you, I think. Um, I don't know what what kind of fuckery happened uh, on Super Tuesday. I know there were a couple of polling stations in uh, Texas that had like lines out the door uh, at at close like close to the time when the polls were gonna close. 
Um, I know a couple people have talked about some of the some of the the, the, the weird little fraud stuff that's going on. So that will I will I will cover that um, in some capacity. But uh, yeah, she and and that was the, that was sort of the thing that I was kind of waiting for is you placed third or fourth in most of these states. Mike Bloomberg beat you in a bunch of these states. Uh, and, and, you know, Bloomberg had a lot of ads that he put out there. And, and you know, the, the, the people that really don't pay attention to, to the deep level of politics because uh, they don't want to. They kind of want to. They, they like the pop culture. They like the theatrics of, of, of politics. Um, you know, they're the ones that are going to go and, and, and talk about how Bloomberg has... Uh, has he's a viable candidate, and he's you know oh well he's a Democrat, and he's oh well, he's not asking me for money, he's funding his own campaign. That's that's pretty good. He's pulling himself up by his own uh, own bootstraps, and it's like yeah, hey, well, fucking all right, relax. It's the whole video I did. If you're if you're if you're one of those people, go watch that fucking video I did about how fucking awful Bloomberg is. So she finally dropped out. Uh, she dropped out uh, Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday. It was soon after Super Tuesday, uh, and I was genuinely concerned because I, I I thought she might stay in to try to detract some more votes from Bernie. Um, she might she might stay in to do that, but I think her campaign was floundering as is. Uh, and now, you know, I don't know what's next for her. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and, and subscribe to this channel. I talk about uh, this sort of stuff often. Uh, I talk about politics, sociology, psychology, uh, comic books, uh, pop culture. So, sometimes some pop culture stuff comes up as well. Uh, but uh, some of the videos are more ranty and loose like this. Some of them are more written and more produced. Uh, some of them are just audio. Some of them are stand-up videos because I'm also a stand-up comedian. So uh, please uh, make sure that you, you subscribe and come back to the channel. Hit that bell to make sure that you uh, are, are absolutely going to get notifications about when I put videos up. Uh, I'm going to be performing live stand-up comedy. Uh, I'm going to be go touring uh, uh, to, to a lot of different places. Uh, and uh, if you enjoyed this content, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the ideas that we talked about in this video, you will probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy. And I am going to be in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, Moline, Illinois, in the Quad Cities area, Chicago, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, and I'm also recording my brand new stand-up comedy album live uh, March 20th in Washington, D.C., March 21st in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, April 2nd through the 4th in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival. Uh, I'm also coming to Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, I'm going to also be in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, Knoxville, Tennessee, Cincinnati, Ohio, and, and a bunch more places. Uh, and I'm also going to be opening for my good friend Lee Camp. Uh, Lee and Lee is on his book tour. Uh, released his brand new book, and I'm I'm uh, honored to be to be opening for him in uh, in a lot of these shows. Uh, Eleanor Goldfield is is also going to be performing some spoken word pieces and uh, some musical pieces in some of these shows as well. Uh, so we are coming to Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Asheville, North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and a bunch of different places. Uh, for, for the entire tour schedule, including my dates with Lee, you can go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. The link is in the description of the video. Uh, I hope some of you guys come out uh, to these live comedy shows and, and hang out and we can get weird and talk about these ideas. Uh, and another way that you can help this show is by, by sharing out this content. Uh, ideas and content like this doesn't usually get shown to a whole lot of people, uh, so it really depends on people liking and sharing 
uh, to boost this up to, to so that it does get recommended to people, so that it does get seen uh, by a lot more people. And uh, you can also financially help to contribute to the show by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmokenhaha. Gives you a bunch of rewards and, uh, and, and helps us hit a, hit a bunch of the goals that we're trying to hit uh, with these shows. Uh, and uh, another way to help is by becoming uh, a sustaining member over on Bandcamp at ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, that gives you collections of stand-up comedy material every single week. Uh, you can also become a sustaining member on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. And for everybody that's already become sustaining members, uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, and, you know, the people that are subscribed and share this out, and share these videos out uh, to, 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 to groups and, and things of that sort, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. You guys fucking rule. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I hope new, new, new listeners will, will, will become, uh, returning listeners will become subscribers, will become patrons. Uh, and I appreciate, uh, all, all the comments and all the views that, uh, that these videos get. Uh, anyway. All right. Uh, thank you guys so much and we will see you on the road. Bye.